Uh, we are pleased to receive our uh, Dr. Enrique with, from Mexico. The seminar will be in English. Well, thank you for, for receiving me again at the university. It's, um, it has been a, my pleasure to, to, to be with you. Uh, the present uh, seminar is to, to present uh, our experience in how we do um, land use planning in, in Mexico and have a, a small um, example or case study of, um, that might be of interest uh, to you all. So uh, there are some, um, uh, so we will see land use planning in Mexico is fairly new business. And uh, that gave us the opportunity to have a very solid background in, in terms of uh, theoretical premises uh, to, to really um, uh, get uh, uh, or to perform land use. The first uh, theoretical premise is that we, we used a multiple use approach. That is uh, to allocate um, the land to, for social, very, very social demands and to try to satisfy uh, social and economic goals in a, in a certain um, uh, scenario. And uh, in, in, in the case of multiple use, uh, we try to, to get into the uh, supplementary relations of the new, uh, multiple use uh, relationships. Um, that, it, that means try to increase the production of goods and services for most of the actors or sectors that are in, in a place. The second uh, theoretical premise is that is, uh, we perform it as adaptive management. That means uh, we have a, we set a kind of an, an experimental setting and uh, try to learn from experience from, from the start. The third uh, theoretical premise is that we have um, uh, embedded uh, conflict management and resolution um, uh, theory to try to prevent um, and set up any dispute settlement rules uh, for, for that. And that uh, for that, we use formal negotiation tools. Um, with that, it's uh, the premise is again, is to have rational decisions in the planning process. The next uh, theoretical premise is that it's a participatory, it's a participatory, participatory planning. And so the stakeholders actually are the ones who build the plan. And last but not least, uh, we try to introduce watershed management and integrated coastal management as a theoretical premises uh, for our planning set. On the legal uh, framework, uh, our law, as I said, is fairly new. It dates from the 90s, uh, end of the 80s. And uh, the, right after that, uh, the, we uh, put into our constitution the third generation human rights, you know, right to a healthy environment, right to development, the um, or in a sustainability scenario. Uh, right to share and the exploitation of the, um, the common heritage of uh, mankind, uh, mainly biodiversity and cultural heritage. And then we uh, uh, international treaties, uh, climate change, uh, biological diversity, um, to combat the certification, the Kyoto Protocol and the Nagoya Protocol, uh, among others. Uh, when we talk about this, uh, land uh, use planning lies within the environmental legal framework in general, and the urban planning lies under the human settlements legal framework. So if we look up at any scale, uh, we have from planning or policy instruments, environmental strategic assessment, we use the European uh, model, land use planning, urban planning and environmental assessment, risk assessment, et cetera. And with, with this, accompanying this, we have uh, land use plans. You have uh, one for the country, marine, regional, and local. But as you will see, the scale uh, varies a lot. Uh, at the national level, we talk about one to four million scale. At the marine areas, it's uh, one to one million to 200,000 uh, uh, scale. Regional is 100 
250 to 100,000 and local 150 to 150,000. <clears throat> uh, the case study I will approach is located in, uh, in Manzanillo, Colima. It's uh, in the Western coast of, of Mexico. And uh, it's, a, it's a natural port. It's the, our biggest port in, um, in, in the Pacific coast. And the current post uh, is in Manzanillo, beside, um, I don't know if I can show it to you. It doesn't show where the Manzanillo uh, uh, etiquette is in, where the 61 number is, uh, 60 and 61 is where the current quarter lies. And just southeast of Manzanillo, there's a coastal level system where uh, a possible uh, port expansion might occur. We will um, see it later. The process for land use planning is fairly complicated. It's, uh, it has a lot of uh, stages and a lot of um, uh, parts. And I will, uh, oh, thank you. <laughs> so, uh, I, sorry for the Zoom, Zoom uh, guys, but it's, uh, this is a coastal system. The current port is on number 60 here. The coastal system is in the number 31 uh, for those who cannot see it uh, by soon. Okay, so the land process uh, is fairly complicated and I will try to illustrate one part uh, of the process that is the program formulation. One uh, thing that's important is uh, it's, all the process is open and it is uh, transparent and it's available uh, on, online for those who want to, to see it. Uh, the program formulation uh, has several stages, uh, one descriptive, uh, one diagnostic, one uh, prognostic, uh, and the model construction, and uh, instrumentation. Uh, each one of these uh, um, parts wishes to uh, address uh, questions. <clears throat> on the characterization, uh, we have a descriptive maps for all the, all the available resources uh, on the region. Um, but we have to address what happens in our coastal zones. In Mexico, they are dominated by one sector. It's either tourism or port or oil or fisheries. And uh, the coastal plains are there highly in or intensely used. Uh, but one thing that is, it has to bear in mind that for most of the time, the ocean's border is not part of a integral part of, a, of our landscape. And uh, so we usually turn our back to the sea. Yeah? So we have a very limited um, um, boundaries and uh, we, don't integrate it uh, generally or usually uh, as a common um, practice. Okay. So uh, in this characterization, one of uh, our most important maps is uh, our vegetation land use and vegetation map uh, in, in, in this place. For instance, uh, this is um, a very small, the port around Manzanillo is surrounded by mountains with the uh, uh, forests, tropical forests and uh, several areas for where you have coastal ranching and several uh, groves uh, for growing mainly lemons. And on the coastal zone, you have mainly the, um, the uh, fisheries, artisanal fisheries and the city and the port itself. Now, on the diagnosis part, uh, we actually, uh, what we do is uh, have, um, to try to define the stakeholders and, uh, and the sectors. Perform a land use of feasibility criteria and analysis. Have uh, to identify the possible sectorial conflicts and have a preliminary land use policy allocation um, uh, process. So uh, when we talk about typical land uses in, in coastal zone Mexico, in Mexico, we have the same stakeholders or same anchors that we have elsewhere. 
But um, what we have to ask ourselves are what are the particularities of the sector or the stakeholder in, in the region? What resources it uses? How does it do it? And for that, we uh, try to apply a, a map where we add up or define the, the sectors with what are the variables or uh, the resources they actually use. For instance, if, if you talk about cattle ranching, uh, you might uh, need, uh, very, they have to be close to wells, water wells to, pay, to give water to the cattle. And that gives us um, a, a very um, good map of how to allocate uh, the resources. These resources are uh, ponderated and then uh, you can we can have maps of the special uh, favorable conditions for an, any set of uh, variables. So um, uh, through project uh, object programming, we can add up all these variables into one map to provide what would be the feasibility for a certain use in a certain part of, of, uh, of the land. So we have maps like this. Now where in the, the higher the intensive color shows the best aptitude for X sector. For instance, this is in, for another example, but it's uh, it's a better map. It's um, uh, it illustrates it's better the, the the procedure. This is for intensive agriculture, or for seasonal agriculture, or for conservation purposes, or for extensive cattle ranching or for alternative uh, tourism, et cetera, for each of the sectors that were defined in the, in, in the search and the region. But with these maps, we can do a lot of things. Uh, we can see how even a sector uh, has a pressure of its own resources and competes with itself, no? So for instance, in, in the above, um, in the top uh, site map, you can see how the forest, uh, the forest uh, uh, exploitations of the of the coastal zone are really getting very intense, or the tourism in the lower left uh, map is really competing by itself, you know, and, and having conflicts within the, the sector. Or in the right hand uh, map, uh, the urban development um, uh, growth is really uh, getting into this region. Then we can create uh, uh, really um, interesting maps. Uh, for instance, the number of uh, sectors that are in conflict, that, it, that means that they are competing with, for the same land use in a certain area. And uh, then we can see if these conflicts are relevant or not and qualify them. For instance, on the red part, uh, it's uh, there are competing sectors, you know, in, um, mainly, for instance, on the sand barrier of the coastal lagoons, or in the um, threshold between the agricultural lands and the growth of the, of, of the city. <clears throat> uh, we can. Or we, uh, what we will do is to, to see conflicts uh, between sectors. Now, for instance, between human uh, housing and infrastructure building in the upper left uh, map, or conservation and mining operations in the, in the map on, on, on your right. Then uh, we, we proceed for uh, certain thematic diagnostics, uh, for instance, in physical elements, for instance, you have uh, in the map on the left, erosion, or how vulnerable are the aquifers on the, on the, on the other map. Uh, thematic diagnosis in, in ecology, where on the left map, you, you can see where are the priority areas for conservation of ecosystems and for biodiversity conservation, or, where the fragile, uh, ecological fragile areas are in, in, in the region, or where um, we can find uh, the places where environmental services are best served and provide. For instance, uh, the map on the left is carbon fixation or humus production on the map on the right. Areas for aquifer recharge, no? And we can pinpoint 
these areas and add it into the database. Um, then, we, for instance, in terms of conservation, we can come up with a map to try to prioritize areas to preserve environmental goods and services. And not surprisingly, the, the higher parts of the watershed are the most important in the right-hand side of the map. But also you can find um, in the middle of the map here or um, uh, right here, areas that are uh, were not apparently evident near Halipa, if you see it in, in, in the, the zoom, uh, that are important for, for to preserve. You know? <clears throat> then uh, we proceed also with socioeconomic diagnosis, like uh, risk assessment in the upper map or um, landscape um, quality on the uh, on the one on the left, or urban development on the one on the on on the right. Also, as uh, I mentioned earlier, uh, we add up also uh, cultural heritage um, in maps and importance. Uh, we have been working on that, uh, trying to, to add up from archaeological um, uh, sites to important cultural uh, sites into the map and also to prioritize them in each of our exercises. Then on the prognosis, uh, we, we make um, tendencies analysis. Uh, with vegetation and land use change models, uh, behavior in the future for a certain sector or tendencies of our interest for a particular case or, and development scenarios. For instance, this was a land use and vegetation map for uh, late, at the beginning of the 80s. And the, set, the series of maps I will show you uh, currently show you the fragmentation process that it has become in, in 30 years. It's in 2005, 2030. That's a projecting the, the, the projected uh, uh, fragmentation of the, of the landscape in, in, in this area. <clears throat> so in, in terms of, um, of uh, multiple use uh, scenario, we have to provide some development scenarios. So we had uh, current tendencies in scenarios, such as the one I showed you in, in terms of vegetation and land use change. We have an ideal scenario that would be the, the letter to Papa Noel. You know, what would be the best if, uh, possible outcome of, uh, of development? And then we have to make a compromise you know, and, and, and get it to a really or feasible uh, scenario. So in, in these terms, um, in one of the several workshops that we made with the stakeholders um, through a ludic, um, uh, 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 just a game and with cards, we asked them to, to try to, to see how they perceive themselves and how they perceive themselves in the future and what will be the development scenario that they, they really, really want. And in this case, for instance, the current scenario had the port as the main factor or, or of development. Now it's, the port by itself, it's the most important thing. And all things uh, around it, fisheries or agriculture or conservation, forestry, all the rest of the, the sectors or the, the, the activities are not very important. The red lines uh, show where there are conflicts between one sector or another and the green lights where there's a uh, um, they, they help each other uh, to do this. But when we change to uh, an ideal scenario, look at what happens. The, the size of the boxes is the size of the, impor the importance of, of what uh, people think. So um, in this map mind, conservation and tourism, for instance, are, are really important. That means that the people want to change its uh, way of life and port, the port is it's still important, but not as important as it, uh, it, it, it might be. But then you have a compromise scenario. And in this compromise scenario, 
what uh, came out is really the, the, uh, the urban development housing is one of the most important things for, for the people in, in Manzanillo to have a better sea, actually. Yeah? And even though the port is important, tourism is, is important, conservation is important because uh, lack of water, water. Um, there are other uh, um, sectors like forestry or fisheries or even mining that might be important for, for the development of uh, the scenario of the, of the region. So for the land, the actual land use plan, uh, we take into account the, the development scenario as uh, we write it down as we kind of uh, this. We divide uh, the territory that we are um, um, performing the, the land use plan in management, discrete management units. And then we set up environmental policies according to the law uh, that it's uh, there set it by law. And then we provide management guidelines and uh, in several scales as general, intermediate or specific for each sector. And uh, also uh, evaluation indicators to see if our plan would, uh, uh, would be feasible in terms of adaptive management. So this is the regional model. Uh, and this regional model was compromised, was made using the watershed um, as, as a basis. And what you can see is in numbers for the Zoom uh, viewers, the 26 is the first big lagoon near the port. This, the, the other coastal lagoons, this is an intermediate use lagoon. and uh, a fourth lagoon uh, for preservation purposes. This is a very small lagoon, a part of the system here in the 28 number that um, is actually uh, lost or practically, practically lost uh, to development. So it's not taken into account for the model. So in this case, we can see the, the port of Manzanillo, the city and, uh, and, and the port. Uh, again, the port is in, the current port is in number 61. And the expansion would be in where the number 25 uh, is here. All this part is the possible expansion of the port. And you have the other two lagoons to the south uh, east uh, that are meant to be preserved. So when, when uh, we apply the maps uh, according to, to our environmental law, uh, and uh, re recall the, the map I showed you about, uh, for instance, the protection of ser uh, services, uh, environmental services, you have um, a policy of protection in the, the upper side of the, of the watershed and in a new place in uh, the near uh, in the center of, of, of the map. You have to preserve areas where you can, uh, they're important to, for instance, for aquifer recharge or um, forestry. You have to restore some areas in the right hand uh, map. And uh, we have a sustainable use of mainly the coastline uh, with high pressure development. So the local model integrates these policies. And we had uh, an integration of the two models, you know, the regional model in the map on the left with the local model in the map on, on, on the right uh, uh, to increase the scale of, uh, of the maps. Then all the, all the information we, we have, uh, we put it in some, um, in a database, when for each management unit, we can have all the available information in, uh, at all scales, from the general characteristics, the main parts of the diagnosis, the main parts of, uh, of the prognosis, and what are the model, uh, the policy of the model, and the criteria to land use criteria in one big data database that could be readily readily uh, available 
uh, either for investors or for uh, authorities. So uh, going forward, um, going forward, this is the micro watershed map uh, of, of the of the region. So uh, we have this, the two um, the map. It says uh, Laguna Chica and Vaso Bons. Uh, that is where the port might be. You have a very second large coastal lagoon. It's uh, Vaso Tres that has um, salt mining operations and fisheries, um, aquaculture. And the fourth uh, lagoon, Palo Verde, that is to have a, a sanctuary for birds and mainly crocodiles. Also the coastline is um, uh, nesting grounds for turtles. So the question now uh, bears, how do you address the new, uh, the new port. The new port would be south of this locality it's called El Colomo in Vaso Dos. In the south, and you will see it in, in the first uh, coastal lagoon with a, a great pressure. So how to transform the current port that is here in Manzanillo to the next um, uh, uh, le coastal lagoon system. So right now, uh, the new installations of the port uh, comprise a thermoelectrical plant, a natural gas terminal, a big, a big one, an LP a gas terminal, a household appliances terminal, uh, the Korean, uh, a Korean company just put its uh, big uh, warehouse uh, there. Uh, well, you know, this is not a commercial, but it's one of these big uh, Korean companies. And um, an industrial park. But there are plans for, for the future in this, uh, in this second lagoon to, to, pro to provide several things. Uh, first, a car terminal to embark uh, uh, cars to, to Asia. A container birthing, uh, contain, container birthing positions up to 80 uh, birthing positions. To give you a scale of, of this, uh, Shanghai right now it's, it has 36 uh, birthing, uh, container birthing positions. Uh, Long Beach, that is the, right now the biggest port in the, American, in the North American region has 12. So it has, uh, a uh, big chance to up to 80 and integrate and receive most of the container traffic of the Asia uh, watershed in, into Manzanillo. A container jar to manage all this, a railroad jar also to, to manage this. Uh, the Sayaboga, uh, I don't know if, it, if that's um, uh, expansion. The Sayaboga is where the, the ships turn themselves from, you know, they, they in, in a clockwise or a counterclockwise direction, they move. You know? So this has to be very deep. Uh, internal channels, uh, channel dredging and the expansion the, uh, of uh, an urban development of three currently now rural communities in the area that right now they are, um, well, they are facing um, a very high pressure pressure of um, cost of the of the land and speculation uh, of the land right now. So what have to we, what we what are the tasks that are um, have to be done at this moment? We need to ask ourselves uh, through a, an, an environmental strategic assessment or other tool is how to design a sustainable port? That's a good question of how to, to address these problems right that now that the engineers haven't, uh, haven't arrived yet. No? Um, in terms of um, uh, theoretical and academic uh, issues, 
the design of collective tools and methods uh, for conflict resolution and land use planning locally. Uh, the design of environmental biodiversity and urban planning policy guidelines at municipal and state levels. Now it's uh, due to the pressure. And to better up our monitoring indicators to see if what we are trying or to, to propose is feasible or not. Okay, uh, thank you very much. And uh, well, we open the discussion and questions, please. So. <laughs> Thank you very much, Enrique, for this uh, very uh, clear and uh, very, very interesting uh, presentation. Uh, I have a, a lot of questions, but uh, I, I will uh, give uh, the opportunity first uh, for the students uh, to express themselves and uh, to uh,